Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. We're doing something a little bit different today. We've had this one sitting here for a little while. It's the Cooler Master NC100, but don't be fooled by the form factor. This is not a regular PC case. This is an Intel NUC case. So it, it uses one of those Intel compute elements. We actually did a whole video with the Ghost Canyon NUC last year, and I'll put that in the top right hand corner. But this is a case designed to allow you to install much bigger GPUs so let's do something different. Let's do a build in it, and then we're gonna talk about all the things regarding this case. But first we need to pull it apart. Yeah. Is that right, Claire? Yeah. Okay, roll the intro. All right, as mentioned in the intro, we actually checked out the Ghost Canyon NUC, and there is a link in the top right hand anyway. But basically the difference between this is, as I already mentioned as well, is it allows you to install much bigger GPU. So what we're gonna do is we're not gonna put the biggest GPU in here that we've got because the included power supply, because this does include a power supply, is a 650 watt power supply. Now, the difference being here is they're not a regular SFX power supply. They're actually made specifically for these NUCs because the power connections are slightly different. So from a PC builder's perspective, which is where this is really being aimed at, it is a little bit different to the Ghost Canyon NUC. Uh, it's not really a turnkey solution like the Ghost Canyon NUC because obviously it doesn't have any hardware in it. Whereas the Ghost Canyon NUC allows you to basically choose a configuration and then they send it to you and then you can add your own GPU and whatnot. So less turnkey here because all you do is you buy the case as is and I'll put the pricing and everything towards the end of the video when we talk more about that. Let's pull it apart and I'll show you guys what the story is with this case, right? So first off the bat, there's just some regular thumb screws. I pre-loosened them. They're actually quite tight uh, when you pull it out of the box, but it is, uh, Longer, I'm gonna say it's longer than the NR200P, but again, this is not an ITX case. Its capacity is about 7.9 liters as well. It's got the regular mesh side panels like we saw with the NR200, except they're screwed in. They're not, they don't use those captive kind of clips, but they have captive thumb screws. I'll pull this apart. And if we flip this around, it actually comes with a package with all of the stuff that you need to get started in it. So obviously you can see that power supply is built into the case. The connections on the power supply are non-standard, being that the it does have like regular PCIe power for a GPU, but the power connector on the actual board itself for the compute element is not the same. But if you're not sure, I'll actually, again, there's a link in the description and the top right hand corner. If you wanna see how the compute element works, because we tore the whole element down so you can see the CPU, the reason why this platform is kind of interesting and important is you can, you'd be able to upgrade that compute element at a later point in time. Obviously the price for the compute elements is quite expensive. This might be an interesting solution for people who need a portable PC or a computer they don't really wanna care about too much or if, you're, if you don't have the same amount of knowledge as other people with actually building PCs, this is quite easy because all you need to do is slot the element in, slot the GPU in, and you're good to go. Obviously you'll have to put the RAM and stuff on the element, which we're gonna show a little bit later in the video, but this is quite an easy solution. Not, again, not as turnkey as the Ghost Canyon NUC, but still quite cool because you have less of a restriction for mounting GPUs, which is something I can definitely get behind. Let's circle back to the panels of the case because this is actually quite interesting. There is, the top panel here, as you can tell, these are not 120 mil fans, these are 92 mil fans, and these come pre-installed on the top of the case as well. So you don't need to do anything. Obviously they're not plugged in, so you will need to attach these yourself. But again, pretty standard for a NUC to have included fans, and it's nice that these are pre-installed. If you really wanted to, in which you, you don't really need to do this, but there is a built-in RGB controller I don't know why, <laughs> but you can change these to RGB fans if that's something that you wanted to do. There's a bunch of cables and stuff that come with it as well. There's a USB type C cable for the front panel. There's a USB type C header on the actual compute element as well. So if you wanted to connect that up, you can. 
Uh, there's also an RGB controller built in and a bunch of tweezers. <laughs> I mean zip ties, guys. <laughs> there's also this. This is a bit of plastic. This is a vent for the compute element so it can exhaust or rather intake from another part of the case. And I think this is meant to intake from underneath the power supply. And lastly, there's a magnetic fan filter that goes on the top of the case as well. You can use this, you don't have to use this, whatever you like, it's up to you. But yes, it does include an additional filter for the top of the case as well. The NC200 actually comes with this baseboard, much like any other NUC that's gonna be in this class of NUC as well. And it's got, it's, a, it's PCIe, let's be honest. There's a PCIe slot for the compute element and there's one here for the GPU as well. What I would have liked to have seen would basically allow you to put the uh, GPU right up against the compute element because that way you would have been able to put a much wider card. But I think we can actually get away with a two and a half slot card, but we're not gonna do that in this video. We're gonna go 3060 Ti Founders because it's gonna look good, right? And that's half of the reason why we're gonna do it. One thing that I thought was worth mentioning is that with this baseboard, I'm actually not sure if this will support PCIe Gen 4 with the signaling on this baseboard the way that it's designed right now, because I suspect that with later generations of these compute elements, they will support PCIe Gen 4, but whether or not this is ready to go for it, probably not, but it's very, very hard to say. I wish there was a way for me to test this, but unfortunately there is not. As I mentioned previously, the power supply is not a standard SFX power supply. It is the same form factor, but physically not the same in terms of connectors. You have this 10 pin connector, which connects into the baseboard for the compute element. You've also got regular CPU power, so some eight pin EPS power connectors. This is basically to power the compute element. This one is to power the baseboard itself. And then you've got PCIe power for your GPU as well as two SATA or SATA power connectors if you were to be wanting to install some SSDs in here as well. But what we're gonna be doing is using M.2 because it's 2021 and that's what we're gonna do. If we take a look at the rear of the NC100, you can see that there's the power connector up the top for your AC power. And then you've got the cutouts for the PCIe slots, we're gonna call them. You'll notice that on the compute element side, you've actually got three cutouts. This basically tells me that the plan is that Intel will eventually release some compute elements that will be wider with much more powerful CPUs. Hopefully we get some of that interesting new 11th gen stuff in the compute element form, because that'd be quite nice, because I think they've currently stopped that 9th gen stuff. So that's what we're gonna be covering in this video. I know it's old guys, but there's physically nothing newer that we can use with this and that's all we could get our hands on anyway. As well as that, there's two slot covers for a GPU, but this looks like we can almost do a three slot if you wanted to put it all the way up against the edge of the case, but I would say two and a half slot is probably going to be what you'd wanna go with. As I mentioned, you do have quite a lot of space for GPU length and the maximum clearance you're looking at is around about 320 millimeters. So a lot of GPUs will fit in here quite easily. Okay, I think that's basically all the stuff I wanted to talk about regarding the NC100 as is, as it is kind of designed and made and whatnot. So I think it's time to do a build, which is such a weird thing to say with the NUC, but let's do a build, let's test it, let's do all the thermals, let's do everything else, and then we'll chat about all the configuration and everything uh, later on in the video. So this video might go for a long time, I don't know yet, but stick around because this may or may not get interesting. And I'm gonna guess that this is gonna get pretty interesting.
All right, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed this kind of build in the Cooler Master NC100. Uh, let's quickly take a look at the thermals before we chat about all of the hardware that's in here. As you're seeing on screen right now, as expected, it gets very, very hot. And that's mainly to do with the compute element. They just get hot because essentially it's a laptop CPU in this. So yeah, uh, there's not that much cooling. There's basically a blower style cooler with that vent that comes up from the bottom of the case that you saw through the build section of the video. But the GPU thermals are about what you would expect from a 3060 Ti Founders Edition anyway. So overall, not too bad. Because this is kind of a build and there is hardware that can be changed, even though it's basically a souped up laptop. <laughs> the Intel compute element we're using is using the Intel Core i7-9750H. It's a six core, 12 threaded CPU and can be found in many, many laptops as well. For RAM, there's 32 gigs of RAM. We, we couldn't quite max the RAM up because we didn't have any. We had 32 gigs to go in there and the RAM is at 2666 because that's all you can use with these computer elements. There's 32 gigs of crucial memory at 2666 megahertz. For storage, you went with two one terabyte Fire CUDA 510 drives from Seagate. The reason why I threw two drives in is because as you're about to see in some benchmarks a little bit later, well, coming up soon rather, we actually did some Windows and Linux testing. So I wanted to install one operating system per drive just to make my life a little bit easier for doing all of that testing. So yeah, there's two drives in total. That's basically it for the specs of this NC100 system that we put together, but let's check out all of those benchmarks. performance of this system with this GPU compared to our test bench system isn't actually that far behind, actually better than I thought it would perform considering this is basically a laptop CPU. So for resolutions like 1080p, it actually holds up quite well compared to our much faster 10900K test bench as well. If we look at the CPU results in Cinebench, you can see that the results aren't amazing. They're basically what you'd expect from this in a laptop as well. So yeah, we didn't see anything that much higher. And with the thermal testing, if we just quickly chat about that as well, we didn't see any CPU throttling at all, even though the thermal temperatures were quite high with this system. So overall, actually not too bad at all. That's basically it with all the testing for the NT100 system. If you wanna know how much this thing costs, well, just the case, remember, it's just an enclosure. It's none of the hardware. Just for the case, you're looking at about 199 US dollars or around 299 Australian dollars at the time of filming this video. I think they're trying to justify the price because of the baseboard and the power supply because these power supplies at this size can get quite expensive. So. Overall, if you're thinking about this in a small form factor sense, 
It's actually a fairly okay price for a small form factor case. However, this product is quite niche. And if you were to actually build a system with compute element in this type of configuration, the price of entry is probably somewhere around the 2000 US dollar mark. It's basically a very, very, very expensive high performance laptop. And the compute element in this one isn't the only one you can get as well. There's an i5 version, an i7 version, there's an i9 version, and I also think there's a Xeon version as well for a workstation. I mean, it's pretty interesting. As I talked about in our original Ghost Canyon video, which I've probably said like 500 times in this video, the technology and the idea is really, really cool. The price of entry is just a little bit too high, I think. Although there are use cases like I mentioned as well, like if you're a content creator who travels around a lot, who prefers to work on a desktop machine, or if you're traveling and you want a high performance gaming PC or something like that, something like this will do quite well, especially in the NC100 because it's bigger. But yeah, again, very, very niche product, very, very expensive, but this is, is cool i think it's cool i think it's pretty interesting and pretty cool and this is more geared towards enthusiasts rather than the ghost canyon version which is a turnkey solution so yes the nc100 is definitely coming at it from an enthusiast perspective and an enthusiast who's got lots of money to burn and that's basically all I got to say. If you like the music and you wanna get it for yourself, it's available over on our Patreon. If you wanna get early access to some of our videos, most of our videos actually, check us out over on Floatplane. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek and let us know what you think of the NC100 and the whole Intel compute element thing. And I've gotta say this because someone's gonna comment it. This is not sponsored by Intel or Cooler Master or whatever. They just sent over the stuff and I was like, yeah, I might do something with it. And yeah, I actually wanted to check it out because it's been sitting in my office, kind of burning a hole on the floor in my office. And I'm like, I should probably look at this thing because I, I did think the original compute element stuff with the Ghost Canyon was interesting, but I wanted to see what it was like in a slightly different form factor. And I still think it's pretty cool, but it's very, very expensive. Thanks for watching.